morning, everybody. Welcome to the Finley River Cowboy Church. Howdy. Howdy. Good. When you trying to be when you for years and you for years in between years. Oh, for years of goodies for you forgot he's for years ago and we have a friend in need and we have in years for for God's and righteousness for years and is for his for cleanness and is for with on for chis with on his feet and then we head with on his with his Jesus wearing sandals on it and in this for this all this for this or the armor of God and yours current is for this is for this for the God's righteousness. Let's go to the Lord to prayer. The heavenly Father Lord we thank you for this day. We thank you for it. we thank you for it and any blessings. Lord is for God only is it for God only is it keeping our heart and in you for God only is between you besides in years and in years and for goodies for years ago and you for years ago for years and for years size and you and years and for years of God for no matter where you are and yours and you tell us somebody you're at work with yes, years and for years only a God and is for this for all this for a family member Cowboy Church and yours for yours for only as a for us for this play today. Lord we come to you and you keep help us and he's in your forgiveness and it's for a day tomorrow yes. and you for God helping us and for his and keeping us safe with us and only God's for praying with us and this only allowing us and with us and keeping us safe. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't forget about for use for God helping us for righteousness for this and the God Son of the Holy Spirit and hold up your Bible and say like you mean it ready. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Great. Good to see each and every one of you today. Happy birthday, America. Amen. Happy birthday. We do live in a good country. Might be a little bit of a mess, but sometimes that's the way our lives are. We over, overall we're a pretty good people. We sometimes live in mess. Yep. And that's okay. We serve a good God who's perfect in everything that he does. Amen. I told the prayer group this morning, I kind of wrestled and, and debated this uh, this week as to what I was going to preach, and I added a message to the moments uh, with the master series that we've been doing. You would think that I would do a message on freedom or something like that. And the Lord just <laughs> kind of impressed upon me to add this to our our talk about moments with the master. We're going to talk about the faith that a centurion had at one point. And that if you want to turn in your in your Bibles, Matthew chapter eight, <coughs> we're going to cover verses eight through thirteen. I don't want to tell you how, do we do they still have science fairs anymore? Do they? I want to tell you about a recent thing. The American Magazine held a competition several years ago inviting readers to submit some scientific theories on any subject. And below, here are the winners. In fifth place, in the subject of probability theory, in an infinite number of cowboys riding an infinite number of pickup trucks, 
fire an infinite number of shotgun rounds at an infinite number of highway signs, they will eventually write the complete works of Shakespeare in Braille. <laughs> in fourth place, the subject was biometrics, biomechanics. Uh, while yawning is contagious, you ever been around somebody you just yawn and then the next thing you know everybody's yawning? Yeah. Yeah, while yawning is contagious, you yawn to equalize the pressure on your eardrums. And this pressure changes the outside of your head, um, balances other people's ear pressures, so they yawn to even theirs out. In third place, the subject was symbolic logic. The Chinese are technologically underdeveloped because of each of their alphabetical characters represents a whole word rather or a phrase rather than a single letter. Right. Thus, they cannot use acronyms to communicate techn technical ideas at a faster rate. Second place, the subject was Newtonian mechanics. The deforestation may cause earthquakes, tidal waves, and even the total destruction of our planet. Just as a figure skater spins at a faster rate when she pulls or they pull their arms in closer to their body, cutting down the tall trees may cause the earth to spin at a dangerously fast on its axis with disastrous results. The winner with a su subject of perpetual motion. When a cat is dropped, it always lands on its feet. But do you know that when toast is dropped, it always lands butter side down? <laughs> Therefore, if a slice of toast is strapped to a cat's back, <laughs> butter side up, the animal is then dropped and the two opposing forces will cause it to hover, <laughs> spinning inches from the ground. If enough toast-laden felines are used, they could form the basis of a high-speed monorail system. <laughs> we're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about a centurion in the Bible. Now, how many of you know that there are several stories in the Bible that regard Roman soldiers or <laughs> centurions. And we're, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Roman army so that we understand that there was not just one centurion in this day and time that we're dealing with. There was many, many that we were dealing, that you deal with throughout Scripture. In ancient Rome, a centurion meant a captain of a hundred men. The Roman centurion was captain over 100 foot soldiers in a legion. A centurion was loyal and courageous and beginning as a soldier in the army was work, work his way up through the ranks. What in the, in the army you start out as a private, is that correct? Right. Dale, what did you leave the army as? Sergeant. Sergeant. He worked his way up and became a sergeant because he got promoted. This is what happened with in, in the ranks of, of Roman soldiers as well. They start out as an infantryman. And they worked their way up based on their loyalty and their diligence to service and ability to take a command and, and go with it. The centurion was loyal and courageous. They were, they were noticed by the general for their skill and courage in battle and were made officers. The Roman army. An army in Rome consisted of three types of soldiers. There was the praetorian guard, which was Caesar's bodyguard, much like today's secret service. There was legionaries, infantry soldiers and officers that made up uh, much like to today's um, we have, America has the largest militia in the world. And then there's the auxiliaries, which is a non-citizen troops, much like today's American military. The centurion was the backbone of the Roman army. The centurions were legionaries. They were clearly noticed because of the special helmet that they wore. You know, the, the helmet that was designed for, for battle 
they didn't have those. They they had a big plume that covered the back of it. So you knew when you looked at across there, you knew where all the all the centurions centuries were. All the all the legion was all there was a there was several men involved here. They carried short vine wood staff that was that marked their rank. They worked their way up in the ranks as soldiers and then were promoted uh, because of their dedication and courage. They were veteran soldiers who commanded 100 men each within a legion. Remember when Pilate, when Jesus was talking to Pilate and, and Pilate said, you, you, are you a king? And Jesus said, yeah, I am king. He says, well, then why don't you free yourself? He said, you know, if I wanted to, I could call 12 legions of angels. That's a lot of, lot of angels that he could have called. Each centurion commanded a hundred men, and with a legion, there's six thousand men in a legion. There were thus sixty centuries in a legion. There were sixty centurions in a legion. And there was during the time of Augustus, there was twenty-eight legions in the in the area where Jesus was. So there was a lot of centurions that Jesus would have come in contact with. There was 1,680 centurions in that region during the time Jesus was here. Altogether, there was 168,000 Roman soldiers in the region keeping order as it was occupied by Roman rule. A centurion received pay. Dale, did you get paid pretty good being in the army? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. You know, our, our, our military doesn't get paid what they're worth. Amen. But these guys, the centurion received pay that amounted to more than 20 times an ordinary soldier's pay of about 5,000 denarii. There were actually five senior centurions in a legion that received 10,000 denarii a year. This is the equivalent of $36,200. That's a lot of money for that day and time. And the chief centurion, the first javelin as he was called, received 20,000 denarii, which is $72,400 in today's pay rate. Wow. The common soldier received around 200 to 300, which is about $724 to $1,086 per year. Hmm. Still a lot of money for that back in that day and time. During the time of Jesus, the headquarters of the Roman army was in Judea, located in Caesarea, on the Mediterranean coast. And also during the New Testament era, the Roman centurion was a professional military officer commanding a platoon of troops called a century. This could be anywhere from nearly 100 to several hundred men. Because a century sometimes was, you had a century group, platoon, as we refer to them, of a hundred men, but you may have several platoons running together to be able to take and make sure that there was no uprisings. And you may have several centurions, but you have one that is the, you have, you, there are several ranks of a, of a sergeant, correct? That's right. What's the lowest grade of a sergeant? Hmm. Uh, Buck sergeant? Yeah. Remember. And then it goes up to what? Master. Master sergeant. I mean, there's several degrees in, in between. This is the same here. Each Roman legion was composed of about 5,000 men, dividing into multiple cohorts. Each cohort composed of multiple centuries. As a result, a legion could contain as many as 60 centurions. So Jesus had a lot of centurions that he would have come in contact with, passed by, talked to maybe. Soldiers were appointed as centurions by virtue of their bravery, their loyalty, their character, their prowess in battle. The Bible mentions several Roman centurions. A man overseeing Jesus' crucifixion was a centurion, probably of a lower seniority. It was a centurion who claimed at the foot of the cross, surely 
this man was the son of God. In the story of the centurion, uh, likely of a high rank, who approached Jesus for the healing on behalf of his servant. And I want to read a couple of scriptures of some instances where the centurion uh, encountered Jesus. Mark 15 verse 39 says that when the centurion who was standing in front of him saw the way he, was, he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Matthew 27, 54, we get the same, same thing, but we get it from a different writer. Now the centurion and those who were keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the things that happened, they became frightened. These men were like, Kevin, I was hoping Steve would be here because Steve's a big dude. These guys weren't just little frail guys. They were big dudes because they carried a lot of, lot of weight. In, in, the, in their armor and the, and the, the uh, military uh, so, swords that they had. I mean, these, these guys were big, brawny guys. And uh, these guys were afraid because of the earthquake. And the centurion said, surely this was the Son of God. Now, the centurion that I want to focus on this morning is the one that I want to uh, have an encounter with Jesus. And I want to talk, talk to you about a moment that he had with the master. So let's look at Matthew 8, verses 5 through 13. And when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, listen to this, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man of a, under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to this one, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled. Now there's only a couple of places in Scripture where Jesus marveled. Truly I say to you, I have not found, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom, the sons uh, that refuse to choose Jesus, to choose to follow me, will be cast into outer darkness. And the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and it will be done as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very moment. Now Luke has a little bit different. Matthew, do we, you know what he was as, as, as a trade. He was a tax collector. Nobody liked him. Jesus chose him. Luke was a doctor. Luke was not a disciple that followed with Jesus, but he came along later on, and they taught was he was given the story, and here we see Luke's story, and we see it from a doctor's standpoint. Luke chapter seven, verses one through ten, and when he had completed all of his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum, and the centurion's slave who was highly regarded by him, was sick and about to die. When he heard about Jesus, heard, that's all it takes, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and save the life of a slave. When they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, he is, he is worthy of you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation and it is he who built us our synagogue. Now Jesus started on his way, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself any further, for I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. For this reason, I do not even consider myself worthy to come to you. For I am a man, on a place under authority, and I say to a soldier, go, and he goes, and one come, and he comes, and to a slave, he, to do this, and he does it. And Jesus heard this and marveled at him, and you know the rest. 
That's a great that's a great amount of faith to come to somebody and say, I don't need you to come, I don't need you to come physically there. All you gotta do is speak the word. That's right. That's how yeah. you came into existence. Yeah. That's how this word came into the existence because Jesus spoke the word. Yes. Amen. 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 The royal official mention here may have been a high ranking centurion as well. In all cases, the centurions are noted for their position of authority. For these men to make a request of anyone, let alone Jesus, a Jew, would have required a great measure of faith and a great amount of humility. Perhaps the most important Roman centurion is mentioned is Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, when Cornelius had a vision and, Peter, and God sent Peter to him to tell him about Jesus. Go read that in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 verse 2 says, A devout man and one who feared God with all of his household, and he gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. According to the Bible, Cornelius saw an angelic vision telling him to seek Peter at Joppa. Not Joplin, Joplin. <laughs> Would have been a long walk. Cornelius was an immediate to the vision. And, he, and Peter told him of his own vision, commanding him to evangelize the Gentiles as well as the Jews. And Cornelius was saved during this encounter. The presence of the Holy Spirit in an uncircumcised, unbelieving Jewish person a Roman centurion, all the people proved to the others who thought Jesus came just for the Jews that the message of Christ was universal. Jesus came for each and every one of us. I'm not Jewish. I have no Jewish heritage or Jew Jewish lineage in my in my life. And if he had came just to the just to the Jews, we would be in trouble. That's right. But Jesus had to come through somebody. To be born, he could, God could have chosen him to be an American. God could have chosen him to come through Spain. He could have come through France. But God chose the Israelites, the Jewish people, the Hebrews, to bring Jesus into this world so that he could give all of us right standing in front of him. All Amen. of us that would choose to follow Jesus. So let's talk about this moment with the Master. Matthew 8, 5 through 13, we see this is the passage that we're going to focus on. In verse 10, it says, Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those following him. There was probably hundreds of people around Jesus at this time. And this centurion came to him and said, I don't need you to come to my house. I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But all you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. May the Lord not say that about us. Amen. You know, we have been each given a measure of faith. As the Bible says, Paul tells us, we've each been given that measure of faith. It's time that we plant it and water it and allow God to grow it. Amen. 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 The first one we shall consider is the Roman, this Roman soldier, this man was a captain of the Roman army with a hundred men under him. And he eventually heard of Jesus. There was a lot of instances in the Bible where people heard about Jesus and things happened. Sometimes we just hear about Jesus. Sometimes we don't even know what to pray, but we can say just the name of Jesus because there is great power in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Possibly he witnessed some of his miracles and became convinced that Christ was the one sent by God and the, to be the Savior of all men. This centurion had a servant that he loved very much and who was ill, and Luke says he was about to die. So he made a request of Jesus. We see this in verses 5 and 6. Here is a situation where only Jesus can help. You ever been in a situation where only Jesus could help? Yes, no. yes. You know, down to you last prayer, so to speak. The case here was desperate. It was a matter of was urgent. 
So he came and pled with the Lord. Maybe you have a great need. Perhaps you have a loved one who is ill or a problem in a business or domestic crisis or a financial problem or a spiritual need. Are you, with all of your knowledge of the Lord and of His willingness to help you and bless you, are you willing to be as wise as this Roman centurion was? Yes. Have you brought your need to the Lord Jesus? He gives us one comprehensive invitation that covers all of our needs. Yes. Matthew 11 and verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. What does the word all mean? Everything. All. Everything. All. Total. Total. What does it mean? Everything, right? Yeah. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Did it say to, to the, those who are following me? Does it say to those who are already Christians? It says to everybody. You know, when you're not a Christian, there's not a lot of rest in your life. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest unto your soul. Yes. How wise the centurion was when his extremity came to the Savior for help. Yes, Lord. But what happened then? He received an answer. Every time you go to the Lord in prayer, every time you bow your knee, every time you point your eyes to heaven and ask God, talk to God, speak to Him, He will answer. Amen. And the Bible says that His answers are always yes and amen. Amen. I mean, I will always get it the way you want it. Right. You know, I prayed for something in 2011, and I prayed, prayed really hard for it, and it didn't, it didn't come about the way I wanted it to. But I can tell you, I wouldn't trade it for for the world. Amen. The way God worked it out in my life, so I'm more blessed today than I was then. Amen. Because of that. Amen. He gave it. He received an answer. He gave this answer in verse seven without hesitation. The Lord said, "All right, I will go and heal him." Remember last week, the 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 leper came to Jesus and said, "Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean." And Jesus always says to us, always says to us, "I am willing." Amen. He's always willing. Amen. 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 The truth is. That this is an attitude towards all who come to Him with their need. Jesus wants to meet your need. You, I don't care what your need is this morning. Jesus can meet it. And He will meet you at the point of your need. Amen. The Bible shows us there are certain needs which may be confident that He will meet. Because we have His promises. Here's an example. If we need salvation... We have a promise of that. All who come to Him are never turned away. John 10 verse 9 says, I am the door, and if anyone enters through me, I will save him, and he will go in and out and find pasture. Yes. If we need cleansing, just like the leper did last week, Mark 1, 40 and 41, and the leper came to Jesus, beseeching Him, begging Him, fell at his, at, on his knees before Jesus and said, If you are willing... You can make me clean. Jesus was moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. And it says immediately he was clean. And he said, I am willing. Amen. Be clean. Yes. First John 1, 7 said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. I don't like that word if in there. But as we walk in the light. He's in the light, isn't he? Yep. If we're a child of God, we're walking in the light whether you realize it or not. That's right. That light, that light exposes things. Okay, you know, it's going to expose all my sin. Sin's been paid for. It's been wiped out. It exposes your righteousness. Because your righteousness is given to you because of what Jesus did. It's not yours, it's His. That's right. And it's been a free gift that you have. But as we walk in the light, as He Himself is light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And that word cleanses in the original language, in the Greek language, means a continual cleansing. If we need guidance, anybody here need guidance this morning? Let us take hold of this precious promise that comes from the Lord. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. 
Isn't it good that God has always got his eye upon us? Yes. Isn't it good that no matter what we do, God's love never fails? Amen. If we need deliverance, we may take Paul's uh, words here with an assurance that there is a delivering power that comes to us on the behalf of what Jesus has done for us. 2 Timothy 4.18 says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. How many of you lack fruit in your life? And I'm not talking about, well, I mean, we got some fruit starting to come in. The thing is, is that God wants us to have fruit, wants us to have love, joy, peace. Happiness. Amen. Love, joy, and peace are very important. How many of you lack that this morning? Anybody need peace in your life? Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. How many of you need more love in your life? How many of you need more faithfulness in your life? If we need these things, listen to what... It says here in John 7, 37 and 38. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, and as the scripture has said, for his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Everybody thirsty this morning? How many of us need illumination? He tells us, and to keeping him, uh, we shall walk in the light, and all the darkness will be banished. John 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them and saying, I am the light of the world. That word for light is source light. You'll remember in Scripture, Jesus said, You are the light of the world at one point. That is a source. That is a reflective light. We, Jesus is the source. We're the reflection of that source. And Jesus spoke to them and said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How many of you are looking at something and thinking, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to overcome this. How many of you need victory this morning? See the gracious promise he has given to us here in John 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken to you so that you may have peace. In the world there is tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then the centurion goes on to, say, to see that, that his faith is displayed in verses 8 and 9. First, the man's admission of his unworthiness. We come to Jesus. We are unworthy. Each one of us sitting in this room on our own is unworthy to stand before Jesus. But Jesus looked through the portals of time and said, I've got to do something and I'm going to go and I'm going to be a baby. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to live out the law. I'm going to die on a cross. I'm going to be raised from the dead so that every person that ever draws breath in this world, every person, an unborn baby that has been cast out. I'm going to tell you, there's a there's a section of heaven that's going to be for all these unborn child yeah. and all these mothers that have gone to heaven are these, these wannabe mothers that didn't get a chance. They're going to have some rocking chairs up here rocking them babies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's going to be a place for you in heaven. All you've got to do is trust in what Jesus did for you. Just the same as this, this centurion. I believe this centurion, we're going to see him in heaven one day. Amen. I believe that because of his faith, he became a child of God at that moment. No, no child. First, the man's admission of his un unworthiness, he said to Luke, he said, I'm unworthy that you should even enter under my roof. But all you have to do is speak the word. The second is the man's great faith. Lord, say the word, and the miracle will take place. God's already spoken a word over you. Right. God sings over you every day. Is that good, Hannah? Lunchbox. Isn't it good that we know, the Bible tells us that God sings over us every day. Amen. You know, there are certain things that, certain aspects of, of the human body that if you put a microphone into it, you hear music and the way that the body operates. They say that you put a, a really high-powered microphone in space, you can hear music. God is orchestrating all this because he loves you. Amen. Amen. The third thing is, is that the man's intellect and reasoning, 
He, he reasoned because he heard Jesus was in town. He, he may have seen miracles and his servant whom he loved, he went on behalf of his servant, but he got so, uh, such a great blessing in return. That's why it's so good for us to be together. It's so good for us to pray together. We got our, our prayer box up here. Right. If you've got a prayer need, you can write it down on, a, on the index card. We have index cards in there. Write it down. Put it in there. It's prayed for every service. Dale and the, and the guys are going to come up after uh, we get through this morning and going to pray over this box. If you have a prayer need, find a card. Write it down. Put your name on it. Give it to me if you want me to join you in that prayer. But it's good that we pray together and, and be together because it builds our faith. It builds our unity as a body of Christ. Yes. The fourth thing is that the, Jesus gave a commendation. <coughs> Speak the word. And Jesus like Paul. Turns to the crowd and says, This guy has come to me asking me to heal his servant. He doesn't even want me to go to his house, but all I have to do is speak the word. I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. Mm. Where's your faith at this morning? Amen. That's right. Is it still the size of a grain of mustard seed? Where's your faith at this morning? Where's your trust in Him? How many of you believe that God is a God of His word? How many of you believe God will has got promises that He will fulfill these promises? Allow your faith to grow into that. Amen. Amen. And watch what comes of it. The fruit that will come. The love that will pour from your, your heart. The peace that will envelop you. I don't I, I've got this chaotic situation going on, but I don't care. God's got this under control. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm thankful I have Jesus. Sometimes things get frustrating. You know? I had, a, I had a rough day the other day. I went out, went out to mow. I had a flat tire. I had to pull the tire off, take it to the shop. Uh, my shop, I fixed it, put it back on, got out, started mowing, slung the belt off of it, had to go buy a belt, put a belt on the deck. Got out, started mowing the same tire that I fixed. The wheel fell off, broke the clip. I had to go to town buy a clip. But I could have got all frustrated and, 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 and slung stuff across the yard and stuff like that. But it's just another thing me be able to me to be able to express the giftings that God has given me. Not much I can't do. Not much I can't fix. Can you do it? But I'm thankful God has given me that ability. Amen. God's going to allow things to happen in your life, not because He's doing it to you, because He's going to He wants His glory to shine in you. Amen. 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 Bible says. To give glory to God. Let people see your good deeds as you work and toil in this world. Let God, let people see your good deeds that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah. I don't want any credit for what I do. I don't want any credit for the things that I that, that I do and, and help in people's lives. I want God to get the glory. Yeah. That's right. Because He's worthy. I'm not. Amen. He makes us worthy. Dustin, this where I'm going to close. A miracle was witnessed. Jesus said to the centurion, Go, and it will be done just as you have believed. In verse 13, He was saying, According to your faith, it will be done. Jesus says that to us today. According to your faith, it will be done. Yes, Lord. The measure of your faith determines the, the measure of your blessing. You know, sometimes we put God in a box. Time to let Him out of the box and let Him be God. Amen. The centurion had great faith arriving home and found his servant healed that very hour. <coughs> now in Mark chapter 11 verse 22 it says, Surely you will want to pray the prayer contained in this verse, Luke 17 verse 5. I know what that says. Luke 17, verse 5 says, And the apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. That should be our prayer. Whenever we are on the pathway of our Christian walk, when we see Jesus and His grace, Jesus sees us in our faith. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We're thankful, Father, for the outpouring of your love upon Calvary. Yes, Lord. We're thankful, Father, that because of what Jesus did, we all have the ability to come to you. Yes, Lord. And those of us who do come to you and choose to follow Jesus, we have right standing with you. And, Father, we can come before your throne boldly. Yes, and make our requests known. Thank you. Father, I, I know that there's many, many needs in this in this room alone. I know there's many needs of people watching on Facebook or who will watch on Facebook. I pray, Father, that you will you will open up their faith and let their faith blossom and let it just run down into your love that is that is rooted and grounded in the power of your name. Yes, Lord. Lord, we love you. We need you. We stand in your touch this morning. I pray if there's one person in this room who does not know you, they won't leave this place without accepting what Jesus did for them and trusting him as their Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. You guys receive that word today. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mike. I'm going to hear what you do. Well, you know, many soldiers have died for your freedom. Millions have died. It only takes one that died for your sins. Amen. So if there's anyone here this morning that does not know our Lord and Savior, please do not let this day go by without seeing one of us, a pastor, somebody yes. that will tell you, help you. That's all we can do. We can only help you. Jesus will do the rest. Amen. We, uh, we're going to say a prayer over this box here. This box is very important to this church and to us. Anyone that has a sickness, I don't care what it is. It's between you and Jesus. Please, write it on one of these cards. I have them right here. I have a pen here. There's some out there. There's pens. Please, write it on here. Uh, if you need the pastor to pray with you there, Put uh, your name on it and he will do it. Just like he was saying right up here. Otherwise, put it in this box. Our Lord and Savior will be with you. We know that. Most gracious God, we come in to you and ask you to please pray over this box of cares and wants and needs that that people have put in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we come into you as people that we need it. If we need you, we pray to you every day. There's things that we need that only us can share just with you. Lord, I pray that everybody here that needs you comes to you. Yeah, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my family. Yes, I thank you for this church family. Yes, Lord. And we ask all these things in your precious, precious son's name, Jesus yes, Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you there, guys.